What's up, ladies and gents? I just want to give you guys a quick rundown on uh, the Polaroid LAN cameras that you are going to be super stoked to be shooting with. Um, I have a couple different versions here. I just want to start by showing you the different styles. So, the most common style you're going to find are these flip up range finders. The way you open them is the, the range finder is spring loaded, flips up, and you lift up on this up arrow and it pops out. The bellows locks into place, and the way you close it again is to push. It says push to close right here. Pop that closed, pull it up, put the lid back on. But these are the most common ones that you're gonna find. Um, the other styles are basically you have this fixed view rangefinder, and when you look through the sight glass, you'll see um, uh, a distances it goes from 20 feet to like two feet i'm pretty sure and you kind of just gauge how far away you are from your subject or what you're trying to shoot and these ones so this is a fixed it's kind of like a fixed focus and these guys here you focus through the focus hole it says focus beneath it and there's a viewfinder to to frame your uh subject or whatever you're shooting so you kind of get the get the scope of your shot down here and then you move over to the focus and you focus it by uh, moving the bellows back and forth and what you'll see when you're looking through the focus hole is you'll see um, like let's say you're looking at a, someone's face you're shooting a portrait you'll see their face and it'll be a double image and then you just move the bellows back and forth until the image slowly becomes one and then once they align it's totally focused um, so they both work great it just kind of depends on what you like I don't know um, I use them all but so <clears throat> That's kind of how these guys pop together. This guy's for that camera, actually, really. Um, this is another style. This is like most of the common ones you'll see are oak plastic bodies. This is a more um, kind of professional version. Um, this rangefinder is a bit different. It's uh, called the Zeiss viewfinder. And instead of having two windows where you frame and focus, you frame and focus all in this tiny little square. Um, it's pretty It's pretty cool. I, I don't really think it's necessarily better or anything, but um, this guy's aluminum body all machined. It's kind of like the nicer, one of the nicer ones you'll find. <clears throat> These are still the fully automatic cameras. They did make a, a manual professional version, um, which is pretty awesome too. Um, this is the light sensor. Um, so basically uh, it just judges um, how dark uh, your uh, your setting is and it'll adjust automatically for that but you can also manually adjust it says darken and lighten so if you want to darken the image you'll switch it to darken however much you want and if you want to lighten it you'll switch it to lighten and uh, you can get accessories for these cameras um, these ones uh, I'm not so sure about accessories these are more kind of like run-of-the-mill cheaper versions um, but these ones any any link camera that has these spring-loaded uh, lenses. You can get little like portrait kits. Um, these things are all over eBay and you can get all kinds of different attachments. These guys just pop on and um, the lenses kind of pop on and yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, if you're looking for accessories or you want to like mess around and just see what's up, I would just uh, YouTube uh, or you know Google or eBay your model and look up accessories for them. They're all over the place. Um, so I want to just go over how to load these really quick. Get these guys out of the way. Um, it's super simple. Uh, this is the film that you're going to be using. Um, Fuji makes a black and white version of this. It's called FP3000B, and they actually they actually just stopped making it, but you can still buy it uh, on eBay in some places. It's really cool, but this is the most popular one you're gonna be able to find to still make it. Um, <clears throat> keep it in the fridge when you buy it, uh, until you use it, and then when you pull it out of the fridge to use it, let it sit for like, I don't know, five minutes before you throw it in the camera, just to let the emulsion kind of settle into a liquid again. Um, so when you load it, I'll usually snap the case back on. There's a couple things. Um, well, actually, while, while we're looking at the back of the camera, I'll just explain this. Some of these cameras have timers on them. 
and they're kind of pointless. None of them really work anymore. Uh, the whole idea was when you pick, when you pull the picture and develop it, you'd set your timer to the proper amount of time to develop before you peel the picture apart. These uh, the FP100C calls for 60 seconds a minute, basically before you can peel the picture, and it's fully developed. But these never really work, uh, and it's just kind of pointless. Um, so just use your best judgment. <laughs> And if you peel them way too early, they actually look kind of cool. They can be more of like a sepia tone, which is fun. You can play with that. Um, all right, so to load these cameras, <clears throat> there's a little lever on the bottom right there. Boop. They pop open like this. And there's a few things you want to look at in here before you shoot. You want to make sure your lens doesn't have dust on it. I usually just kind of puff on it a little bit. And uh, really important, there's this little red tab here right there and you want to pop this guy up, you want to pull out the rollers, and you want to make sure these rollers are clean. Sometimes, well not sometimes, pretty much every time you shoot, they get a little emulsion on them. And all you need to do is just like, see there's some right there, just kind of wet a little rag or rub it off. Make sure those are clean and like actuating smoothly. <clears throat> okay, so when you load your film, pop this guy. This is what your pack film looks like when you get it open. This is a dark slide. Uh, it's protecting your negative. So basically this you this will be good as long as your dark slide. You can leave this out, you probably shouldn't. I mean, I just, I open them up, throw them in the camera right away, but I have left them out like this and they're fine. But, um, so what you wanna do is, after you make sure your rollers are clean, everything's dust free and you're ready to go, uh, you throw the pack in with the window facing down. Locks in just like that. And then they say to just close the back door all the way and then pull the dark slide out, but I have trouble doing that sometimes. So what I do is I'll close it without locking it, pull the dark slide a little bit like that, and then close it. And then I'll pull the dark slide all the way out. And now you're ready to shoot. Super exciting. So, when you're shooting with, uh, actually it kind of depends on the camera you're using. Um, a lot of these cameras have film speeds on them. This one right here, I don't know if you can see, but it says 75. And you can switch that. It's a little wheel. You can switch it to 150. And you can switch it to 3,000 for the black and white. It actually says 300, there's a 3000. They only make 100 and 3000, so. Um, and there is actually no 100 setting, so on any of these cameras, you're, if you're shooting 100, this stuff, you're gonna switch it to 75 on all of them. And for these more um, slimlined ones, or uh, streamlined ones, there's the, it, it just has two settings, 3000, and 75, so uh, it's not super complicated. And so you, once you switch it to the film speed you're doing, which, uh, so we go 75 for the FP100C. Um, this particular camera actually has, um, it's like indoor and outdoor settings. Um, the top says bright sun only, outdoors or flash. And the lower section says bright sun or dull day, also flash. Um, so you can basically just switch that over at the bottom of this little lever here. Um, we are indoors right now, so I'm going to say indoors without flash, and I'm going to switch this over. And then cock your shutter. Now I'm going to focus, locked up, and then I'm going to switch over to the focus hole like I was talking earlier. This is actually pretty close, I'm going to have to scoot back to, um, to capture this. So I'm aligning the two images to become one, and then I frame it again, snap my photo. I'm actually going to set this to lighten because it's a bit dark in here. So setting it to lighten. Take your photo, and then once you take your photo, you're going to grab the first little paper tab here that's sticking out, just like that, and it's going to reveal another tab. Then you take this tab, pull this all the way in a smooth, clean motion. You don't want to stop halfway through. You want to like 
all the way out. And what's, that, what's happening here is there's the negative and it shoots it onto the uh, Polaroid and there's emulsion in this packet here. I can show you. So there's emulsion in this packet and when you pull it through the rollers, the rollers pop the packets and squeeze the develop emulsion all the way across the picture and start to develop it. And then you can set that aside, wait 60 seconds. You can actually see some of the emulsion that always uh, kind of comes out the back a little bit. And if you touch that, you want to wash your hands. It's not like super crazy, but it's definitely not good for you. Um, so yeah, those are some basics. Basically how to get started and load the film properly. Um, you can leave this film in here for however long you want. It'll be great. I mean, I've shot with film I found in these cameras that's been sitting there in someone's closet for years and it's worked still, so. When you're ready to peel, it's been a minute and this is you're sure this is done developing, uh, you want to get the corner of the image here and you want to carefully peel it off. And this is obviously indoor, it's a little too dark, but um, this is going to be wet. Your image is going to be wet for about 10 minutes. So you want to protect this, set it somewhere to dry. Don't touch it with your fingers. If you're going to handle it while it's wet, handle the white border only. Um, and then these negatives are actually pretty sweet. Uh, you can keep them, scan them, do whatever you want with them. All right, so I also want to just cover uh, how to open the battery compartment and load in the batteries. Um, these cameras uh, used to take um, some pretty gnarly little batteries that are, you can still buy them, but they're about $15 for one battery, so it's kind of nuts, uh, and they're really hard to find. So what I've done is, uh, in the battery compartment, this is really easy to open on all these cameras. You basically just pinch both sides and pull it open. It's spring-loaded with this little tab here. Um, what I've done is uh, I've channeled out the battery compartment and soldered in this new uh, AA compartment, um, which is super easy to mess around with and double A's, or I mean, sorry, triple A's are obviously super inexpensive in comparison to the original batteries, so it just kind of makes sense. So, uh, after you load the battery compartment, just fit this back into its channel, push it in, it should fit with a nice tension, and close it and you're ready to go. One more thing I wanted to mention was, uh, a lot of these cameras uh, came ready and equipped to mount a uh, flash that took a flash bulb, which a flash bulb is basically looks like a light bulb that's filled with magnesium wire, and the magnesium, when it's ignited, explodes, essentially creates a quick flash, and that shit is toxic and gnarly, and you can't get it anymore. So what I do is I go to Goodwill, and I'll find these modern flashes that uh, fit on these cameras most of the time. This camera here will not accept uh, this particular mount, but um, you can find them at Goodwill all the time. Um, so you can also hold these flashes. Uh, so I'll just demonstrate for you. This modern flash can just clip in right here. And um, I'm going to switch the setting on this particular camera for uh, indoor with flash. And I'm going to aim this at my subject or just hold it on the side of the camera, however you want, whatever you want to do. I'm going to find the exact frame I want. I'm going to focus. And then I'm going to shoot. Cock the shutter. And then, same as before, pull the white tab until it re reveals the other tab. Pull it with a seamless motion. And give that about a minute to develop. You can peel these early. And if you peel them early, uh, like uh, you wait about 30 seconds, <clears throat> excuse me, you wait about 30 seconds instead of 60, the picture will look kind of a, it'll have like a sepia tone haze over it, which sometimes is cool. And another thing that's really fun about these cameras is that you can keep taking photos over the same negative. So this will not develop until you pull it out of the camera.